Hi, Abrigipo, Abrigipo.com and today I'm going to speak to you about landscape photography using a tele lens. So for that I'm going to use my Olympus, my OM system OM1 with the 40 to 150 mm 2.8. Um, well, by the way, this camera was the first one that uh, Digiphoto received and they sent it to me. So I thank them for that. I give you uh, links of their website in the description. And for a long exporter and using uh, Polarize all this, I'm going to use the kits by uh, Beeway. I already, already presented this kit, okay? But I asked them if they could send me another one with the exact uh, diameter, 72 millimeter. So I'm going to speak about it. I'll speak about, about the, the kit also, but I'll show you the result you can get with uh, long exposure and tele lens, okay? For many people, landscape photography is always, uh, well, for many people, it's uh, not, not everyone, but many people, it's uh, wide angle photography when actually you can use a tele lens. So uh, wow, the presentation is uh, stunning. I really love it, okay? I'll tell you a bit more just after about the kit, okay? The first thing you have to uh, get is the base filter, which is a UV filter. You actually place it on the lens and then you will add the extra filter magnetically, okay? So I'm going to speak about the kit a bit, but show you some result and the effect you can get, okay? First thing, uh, when you're going to use a tele lens, if there is a, small, a special uh, ring to, f to, to connect to the, well, to where to uh, fix the tripod, use it there. Don't put your tripod on the camera, but on the lens. Why? Because this way the weight is on the center of the tripod, not more uh, in front okay if it was forward you risk to have the, uh, the, the your gear that tips over uh, forward okay so it's really important when you have this uh, special uh, system to uh, hook your or to screw your uh, tripod on there do it there not on the camera well it's almost raining well it is raining there okay so what I really like is that um, the water is moving so I'm going to get in long exposure this uh, really silky Maybe with a bit of luck will be a windy and trees in front of here. So it will be like a kind of uh, Adamski look with uh, everything uh, moved except the subject with the small house you're going to see right now. So I'm going to show you how you use the filter, how you place them, which one I use and all that. So first I'm going to place the UV filter, which is the basic. And then on top of it, I'll put the polarizer. So uh, I will uh, take out some of the reflection. Then on top of it, I will put a, a GND, but I put it upside down, so it cut all this light that there is on the water. And then on top of this, uh, an ND 3.0, which is ND 1000, 10 stops, to cut uh, all the light, get a long exposure. So let's see results. First, a picture with no filter, uh, with the uh, just a, the, the UV basic, uh, the base, okay? I, on ISO 200, F8, 150th of a second. So let's go for it. I put the uh, delay of two seconds when I press, okay? Fine. I had to stop because it started to rain really strong and I'm really all wet now. And uh, placing the filter was getting water on the filter, so it was a uh, the problem was cleaning one, getting the other one. So, well, now I've got it, okay? F8, 50 seconds. So let's see what I get. that I really trust uh, the weather sealing of this camera and uh, lens. Kids don't play with this at home, okay? The thing of using a circular filter with the right size uh, of your diameter of your lens is you can still use the sun hood. Well, uh, in this case it's more, more like an umbrella for rain, okay? Well, doesn't matter. Really, really useful. Okay. The typical use of a graded filter is to cut light that comes from the sky, okay? But in this case, there is more light on the water, so upside down, and I use to cut uh, the light coming from the water, okay? So it's, it's a curtain of rain right now. It gives a lot of light back, so I had to close to F11 uh, because it was overexposed. So uh, let's see what's going on. I'm completely uh, wet right now, okay? So let's see one minute exposure, what I get. 
when we speak about long exposure, we uh, almost always think about water, silky water. But here I've got wheat, uh, wheat I think it's called, I can't remember. Okay, to make bread, okay. So uh, I'm going to make pictures. Uh, there's a bit of wind, okay. I hope the exposure will be long enough to give this uh, silky aspect, but uh, with the plants, okay. First, I've placed uh, the polarizer to get more contrasty clouds. Then I place this graded filter, okay, to cut light on the sky. And then the ND 3.0, uh, which gives me uh, like 10 stops, yeah, ND 1000, same thing, 10 stops, so to get the whole thing to have long exposure, okay. Well, a special place today, the one in the island of Noirmoutier. There is Gregory Audubert, who is the expert of the area, photographer, YouTuber also. And uh, here's the, the, the water is going to go down and there's a road there. I'm using uh, the filter system by Beware, the active set here, and it's using the S system, okay? There's a friend of Greg that is coming, so we told him to stop there and we're going to make a, a close-up of the car with the lights and uh, see how it comes out. I know what your question is. Why do you need to use a tele lens for landscape photography when everyone knows you should use wide angle? Who said that? Who said you need to use wide angle? Who said you need to use tele lens? Well, this is that simple. When you get to a place, you see the landscape. If you don't move your eyes, more or less the, length, the angle you cover is about 50 millimeter full frame, okay? If you move a bit your eyes, we speak about the equivalent of 35 millimeter, okay? So what does this mean? Well, this is that simple. If you angle, the lens you use as an angle that is that covers uh, more than uh, what you would see, then it's different than reality. And if you use a lens that, uh, you, that covers less than what your eyes are seeing, well, it's also not reality it means it's like if you had like uh, binoculars like this okay so uh, if you do documentary photography i think maybe it would be good to look like reality so someone that gets gets to the place recognize the place oh that's it but when you do look at the artistic side of your picture it doesn't matter you just show how you want to show the place if you want to show it a lot larger than it seems to be or a lot further or not now it doesn't matter it's down to you okay so there's nothing wrong or bad or good or better it's just a matter of your decision okay so actually i saw a video by peter mckinnon a few years ago he was interviewing a girl a, a landscape photographer and she was using a lot a canon 100 to 400 millimeter and i really loved the way she was going to reach things that were really far and she could use the, the compression side uh, aspect of uh, tele lens so it would look like mm, compressed, okay? So I really thought it was great. So this is what we're going to try to do here to compress this uh, depth here to give a different look, okay? So let's do it. Very often when we have a filter set, filter kits, whether they're square or round or whatever, these one are by Beware, magnetic filters, uh, we tend to use uh, ND filters to do long exposure and we do we end up doing everything long exposure well i do myself very often but in this case i'm going to show you that you could just play with the polarizer what is going to do this polarizer it's going to give a bit more contrast to uh, the clouds and sky 
and a bit saturated colors and that's it so just this one the other day they were asking me uh, how do you know a polarizer is properly placed well it's that easy you place it you turn it you you look and when it looks as you like that's fine that's it so you can use a polarizer to uh, s uh, eliminate reflection on water and on the glass but not on metal it doesn't matter but you have always water present in many things like the clouds on the, the leaves here so you turn and see if it gets more saturated for more contrasty and you like it that's it that's simple when you use a tele lens take care because uh, it compresses a lot so if you really work wide open the first things the leaves the tree leaves here they will look like a small stain on your picture so don't open too much uh, the, the aperture, otherwise you won't see much what it is, it won't be nice on the picture. So I'm going to probably to work on 5.6, something like this, to have a bit more depth of field. So it's still out of focus, but we still uh, can guess what it is, okay? It doesn't look like uh, some stain on your sensor, okay? So uh, when I'm going to make uh, pictures like this, I'm going to make sure the clouds add at the limit of getting uh, overexposed, okay? I've got the warning here, okay, a highlight warning. Why? Because this way I get uh, full details in shadows, okay? And uh, after, in post-production, I will lower the level of the highlights. So I keep uh, the right lighting in the shadows and I got, I've got the cloud as I want. But take care, don't go too far, otherwise you will lose a uh, texture in the clouds, okay? So let's go for it. The big question is where do I put the point of focus? First, middle, very far. Well, if you put really far, uh, when you look at the picture, sometimes it's hard to see something interesting in focus. It's so far, so you don't know yet, you don't know much. You don't see really what you're saying. You see all this out of focus? Okay. If you do, if you do it too close, in this case, this is in the shadow, so you have uh, something in focus, but it's not that nice. And then you have the whole thing lit in the back that is out of focus. So I'll, I'm going to do about something like a two thirds in the back, okay? But it's not one thing is wrong and one thing is right. It's a matter of uh, what you like, okay? What, how you want to show the place, okay? So uh, when you're in this situation, well, decide if you want to do several pictures. You make one really close, one middle, and one really far, okay? And you decide which one you like best. Obviously, you could uh, have everything in focus, doing focus stacking. Make several pictures, changing the point of focus uh, in depth, okay, and then you stack everything together, everything will be in focus. Uh, is it better? Well, it depends on you, not on me. It depends what you like, a matter of taste. I, I would not say good taste or bad taste, but a matter of preferences, okay? I prefer this or I prefer that, okay? So when you're here, make several pictures to make sure that after, you decide what you like best. If you have a style already, well, keep to your style, but if you don't know yet what you will like better, try several things. Obviously, if you have a prime lens, tele lens, uh, the framing will depend on where you place the camera, okay? But if you have a zoom, you can actually change to have different framing. Many people think that it will change the perspective. It will not change it. What, fix, uh, uh, what sets the perspective is distance between the camera and the subject. If you touch your zoom, you change the focal length, perspective is the same, but, 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 depth of field is different because the longer the lens, the shorter depth of field, and the shorter the lens, well, the wider the lens, uh, the shallow, the deeper the depth of field. Okay, so take, the, take it into account and play with that. Uh, I should could change it and get more details, less details, what I want to get, okay? So I turn right just a bit, I see some windmill, just there, windmills. So, I use my uh, lens to close up on it and I want to do two kinds of picture. I like the clouds, I like that you have uh, two layers. Uh, well, you have three layers actually. You have uh, the clouds with the sky, then you have some brown, then you have some green. I think it's interesting, okay? So uh, we're gonna get two kinds of picture, one with uh, normal normal speed, okay? To freeze the, 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 the wings of, I don't know if you call that wings, of the, of the, the meal, okay? And then one with long exposure, so we get it uh, moved, okay? Mm -hmm. 
well just make some pictures but there is a tractor there okay so this is not a problem it means that uh, when I do normal speed picture that's fine if I do long exposure well I will have like a stain of the, of the tractor that is moving okay so it means that if or I wait for it to be at the end of the field or I do an exposure that is long enough so uh, it's all erased okay but now we're going to place the filters first filter I'm going to place is this uh, GND this graded filter uh, 0.9 which is three stops I'm not to change expo going to change exposure but I want you to see how it cuts light in the sky it's really really nice I like to have the windmill to have uh, one of the wing that is at the top okay uh, 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 blades I think you call that blades probably okay in this case and uh, uh, obviously I have to uh, take out the timer uh, that I use in long exposure to click just at the right moment but if you are not uh, sure to click at the right exactly right moment you could put continuous shooting and uh, get all pictures and pick the one where it's the blades are exactly as you want okay but well uh, now we're going to do long exposure see the results now I'm going to use the ND 3.0 uh, 10 stops like ND 1000 place it to really cut light and I've got to have uh, this motion blur on the on the blades of the windmill okay well after placing the uh, 10 stop it's around two seconds I think one one second two seconds I can't remember okay doesn't matter uh, this way the wings the blades will be moved but take into account that the plants also will be moved okay so uh, we need to uh, check if you like the look okay so but let's try The problem of two seconds, it is too long, so uh, we don't actually see the blades. If it was sun shining in it, yeah, we would see it. But in this case, we don't see them, so it just looks like a, a stick in there, okay? So we're going to uh, remove the 10 stop, put six stops, so we'll get, we see some uh, trail, okay? Uh, I think it will be better. I am still on 5.6 uh, aperture. And uh, actually, I don't have a five stop. I don't have a seven stop. So I could play around the six stops easily. I just play with. Uh, I change my aperture. It doesn't will won't change much. No problem with depth of field. I think in this case, I would be a bit more close, a bit more open. Depends if I if it's not okay. And so I can play with speeds to have the trail that is long enough to be uh, viewable and not too long so it doesn't you don't see it anymore okay so let's play with it well it depends on your preferences okay uh, I like it this way if it was really sunny uh, it could be longer because then you have like a white trail that's not bad okay but in this case I think that's fine on one quarter one fifth of a second okay well I get the blades with a small uh, motion blur and uh, between one forty uh, yeah one fourth and uh, one eighth of a second I think it's fine okay but uh, if you want to try it depends on the wind that day the speed okay so you cannot compare okay so just try and see what you get okay uh, so before getting to conclusion I wanted to say uh, where I am okay uh, I'm in France in Vendée this is where I was born although I live uh, abroad for more than uh, 34 35 years now well for me abroad is here okay and uh, my uh, Vendée is, uh, is the province okay the city I'm from or the town I should say the town is Fontenelle Comte is over there okay and uh, this uh, train this train uh, ra rail uh, it's actually it's not used anymore. I, I don't think uh, I'm not sure if it was from Poitiers to Paris I'm not sure but it's not used anymore and it gets close to my uh, uh, former parents house uh, Because they've moved okay, and when I was a kid I was playing on this railway, okay uh, It was uh, stopped and there was no train then okay, uh, so I remember okay and also uh, the part in the video where you see these fishing huts uh, this is a place called Femoro uh, it used to be uh, carbon mines, coal mines, okay, and uh, it doesn't, they don't use it anymore, but it's a small museum, so if in one day you come to the area, well, you can visit the museum, kids, they get dressed as a miner, it's, it's really great, really nice, okay, so, wow, this is uh, the area where I was born, okay, so let's get to conclusion. Whoa, 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 I was going to forget, Gregory, sorry, well, Greg uh, is a uh, Gregory 
Audubert is a photographer that is uh, on the seaside in the island of Noirmoutier and part of the video here were recorded, was recorded there, some pictures were from there. So thank you to him for receiving me, speaking to me, also uses B-Way by the way. B-Way by the way, that's funny uh, to say it this way, okay. So uh, please uh, check his YouTube channel, I'll leave you the link in the description. Great guy, have a look at, uh, at what he does, fantastic, okay. So conclusion. Well. As you can see, it is completely possible to do a landscape photography with a tele lens, no problem. Honestly, I think whether it's with wide angle or whether it's with tele lens or normal lens, doesn't matter, get some filter kits, okay? Why? It's not just ND filters. Many people think landscape is long exposure is ND filter. No, it is several filters. It's why a kit is always better because you get like a polarizer, which is really useful, graded filter all this okay so as you can see sometimes i use the six stop ten stops it depends on the situation so if you have just one filter you're really stuck and you don't always do what you would like to do so a kit is always uh, cheaper also to get a kit than separate separate okay is we it better so uh, a circular kit or a square filters well actually it depends on you honestly I think this is more practical, this is magnetic, really fast, really quick to use, okay. But, 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 landscape photographers, very often they prefer to have square filters or rectangle filters because when they have, they have a graded filter, they can really place it precisely, so they prefer square. But, if you're the kind of guy who is walking around, stop, make a picture and then keep walking for kilometers, you will prefer this. If you're a guy that you go early morning, you have time, get a coffee, get, you prefer square filters. So it's down to you, but get some filters, honestly. Okay, so uh, that's it, conclusion. You can do pictures, landscape picture with a tele lens, okay? So thank you very much, Beware, for sending me this filter on 72 millimeter size. I already had another size I had reviewed, but this way, on this lens, I could use the sunshade, so fantastic, okay? So if you're interested, I'll leave you a link of where you can actually buy them, okay? So thank you very much for watching the video. If you feel it may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, small button down here, and also a small bell. If you click on the bell, get notified when I upload a new video. My website, erichibot.com. If you have any question, can leave a comment below. I'll also leave you links of my gear on Amazon and a link to my PayPal account in case you wanted to make a donation. Uh, you can now also do donation on any video, a small heart with a dollar sign and you can make a donation there. No obligation, but it really helps. So thank you very much. Please take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.